Man, it's going to be ugly. In the meantime, people are going to be just hitting the licks. But let's get into it. Let's check this out. This is Anna Experian on PBD Podcast. Shout out to Patrick Beck David and the whole Value to Entertainment family. Uh, check out what she had to say about Cali. Let's go to another genius. Uh, uh, Newsome. Uh, here's an article from the Blaze. A month ago, left this Anna experience. You're trying California. to get me in trouble. You're trying California. to get me in trouble. Pat. California is a <laughs> shit show under Newsom. Yes. Left this commentator, Anna Kasparian, the youngsters, describes California as a shit show. The leadership of Golden State Calif uh, Governor uh, Governor Newsom, a Democrat, California is without a question a shit show under Newsom. But I guess propping up proven failures is what the Democratic Party excels. True. At these days, Kasparian uh, uh, opined in a post on X failure is what Democratic Party excels at. Uh, I'm sorry, no, Newsom, who served as governor since 2019, won re-election last year after surviving a governor. Da, 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 da. Okay, so California. You're still living in California, right? I lived there for 24 years minus three years in the Army. You lived in California. You lived years. in California. I was born there. And he's dated a lot of Californians, but he's never <laughs> lived in California. Yeah. So how is California like today? How is your governor doing today? And why are you still in California? I'm still in California. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I'm not going to leave and just allow the most extreme elements of the left destroy the state. OK, so I'm going to stay and I'm going to fight and I'm going to make it better. I think L.A. and California in general still has a lot of potential, but there have been some policies implemented that have been disastrous. So Gavin Newsom and the current uh, Democratic legislature in the state of California have engaged in this trend of decriminalizing everything and refusing to regulate things. So I'll give you some examples. One of the things that they decriminalized but refused. Yo, when I saw this, I mean, I've always known who Anna Kasparian is, right? Because I know about the Young Turks. I was in L.A. for a long time. I was out there. Um, I was in L.A., let's call it 20 years. And then I spent some time in San Diego. I spent some time in, in Miami, but I came back to L.A. So I was out there for a good amount of time. I am very familiar with L.A. Um, I know all about the Angelinos and I'm familiar with California politics because, you know, Uncle Saint is always involved in politics. I was out there and um, I remember when um, Gray Davis got back in the office. I was there, you know, doing all the political stuff behind Gray Davis. And then I was there when the recall happened and Gray Davis got replaced by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know a lot of people who were on the Schwarzenegger campaign. I got to see all that. I'm just kind of flying the wall, just kind of checking it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? What she's saying about the Democrats who run California is, is, is true. I mean, they, they strong arm it out there, just like the Republicans strong arm Texas. Like, you know, Texas is deep red. California is deep blue. And they make some dumb decisions out there, man, some dumb decisions. And the biggest thing is the taxes. I mean, the, the taxes... And the gas, <laughs> right? like they just they purposely run that up. Bro, you got a California emissions thing, and like the gas, man, it's crazy out there. It costs a lot of money to live in California, bro. People don't understand how expensive California is. Gas right now, bro, you man, I bet you pretty soon people are gonna start siphoning the gas out of people's tanks and re and selling it on the black market or something like that. They were out there cutting uh, catalytic converters off your car, bro. You being in a house sleeping, they outside cutting out, cutting off your catalytic converter. That was going on in 2016, 2017. Still going on to this day. Man, it's crazy what's going on out there. They made some bad choices in California, and now they got to pay for it because people are fleeing California in droves. Patrick Bay David, Vinny O'Shana, um, um, and then you got um, Tom. I forget Tom's last name. All of them left California. I left California. I know a lot of people left California. And the biggest reason was the tax reasons, bro. Like, man, it's just too much in taxes. I forget everything else for a moment. Like, man, they are just crushing us in state taxes. And then you look at everything else. You know, mortgages, rents, gas, you have to drive. Traffic is bad. You know, but there's some great things about California. And I, I do believe in California, people like Anna Kasparian here and other Angelinos and, and, and like just Californians in general, I think they're going to get it together. I think, you know, I don't think they're going to start voting a bunch of Republicans in uh, in California, but I think they're going to bring in a bunch of moderate Democrats and, you know, and come in with some common sense, no nonsense plan to get California back on its feet. That's a beautiful state. 
bro, it's just a beautiful state. The stuff that you can do there, man, like from the Redwoods, man, going down to Baja, you know what I mean? Like kicking it on the beach, you know, like Venice Beach used to be great. Santa Monica Beach and Malibu used to be amazing. Not so much now because you have homeless people over there taking dumps right there on the beach and just being crazy walking down the boardwalk. And the cops are powerless to do anything to them. Uh, she's gonna. She's about to talk about what they're doing, trying to decriminalize prostitution. We have to listen to this for a second because it's crazy out there. But I don't think California is going to stay this way. I think California is going to bounce back. I think more people are going to leave. I think more companies are going to leave. It's going to get a little worse before it gets better, but I do believe it's going to get better out there. You know what I mean? Brother Chris, <laughs> Chris is like, California knows how to party. Uh, when I was stationed out there, I lived in OC uh, paying $2,900 a dollars for rent back in 2015. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Down in Orange County, man, that's expensive, man. I was in, yeah, I was up in LA, man. I was in the Valley mostly, but I was in, you know, West Hollywood. I was down, uh, Venice, Marina del Rey. Yeah, bro. That, that, that ain't no joke. Like I left in 2019, end of 2019, call it 2020, but rent for like in North Hollywood for a two bedroom, two bath, barely a thousand square feet, like maybe just a little bit under at between 800 and a thousand square feet. Um, in a decent building. Yeah, man, you're looking at, yeah, 29, anywhere between 26 and 3,100, you know, depending on what property and what amenities they have and stuff like that. So it was, it was crazy out there, man. Brother Smeebles, like from what I've heard, Cali was great in the 80s and 90s. It was depending on who you were. Like, yeah, think about that, man. In the 80s, like from 80 to 90, that's when the game banging thing was going crazy. So if you were south of the 10 freeway, like if you were in South Central watching all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, Compton, uh, parts of the valley like Van Nuys, Pacoima, and stuff like that. Yeah, man, you got caught up. It was ugly. It was a lot of it was that game banging thing was real. But for the folks in Bel Air, Valencia, you know what I mean? Beverly Hills, Malibu, you know, uh, Century City. Like you, when if you were doing good, like Westchester, like if you were doing good, man, life was grand. Life was amazing. It was beautiful people everywhere but you know you can still get caught up in venice venice was dangerous but santa monica was cool and venice and santa monica was just like right next to each other so you could be in santa monica you're good you venture too far south and you wind up in venice at night and something gonna happen to you you know you got the lords of Dogtown and all that the skaters were doing their thing and the surfers were doing their thing they had their own little subcultures but yeah man if you were just living in valencia living in simi valley somewhere that's a, it was a great life you just went down to Hollywood to party a little bit, got too crazy, you went back home to your safe, your safe neighborhood. You know, go back to Simi Valley with all the cops. Santa Barbara was really nice, you know, but man, look, right now, it's crazy. Let's get back to the video. To regulate is prostitution, okay? I think that sex work should be legalized and regulated, okay? What I mean by that is I don't want to see prostitutes walking around in thongs on the streets as kids are walking to school. But what the Democrats in California have done is we're not, we don't have the balls to actually legalize and regulate it. And we're lazy as hell. So we're just gonna do the super lazy thing of decriminalizing, which means we're gonna disempower our legal system, disempower law enforcement, and just allow sex workers to do what they're currently doing right now, which is they have no protection, they're not paying taxes, they're being controlled and, and sex trafficked by Johns, okay? It is the worst possible solution to the issue, okay? No one is safe. Everyone's angry. And you see all sorts of terrible stuff happening right there in broad daylight in the middle of the street, okay? They did the same thing with drugs, okay? We're going to decriminalize. So what do you see in California? Bunch of people shooting up, okay, and smoking crack all over the place. I'm sorry. I'm not interested in seeing that. I don't think that we should be, you know, dealing with that on the metro system. Mm -hmm. Why do taxpayers have to deal with that? So they don't want to they don't want to do anything to regulate. Again, I am fine with legalizing these things as long as we regulate it. As yeah, I need to understand some. Anna is nowhere near the right. She's nowhere near that. She's not concerned. I mean, at best, you could say she's center left at best. When you listen to what she's saying right here, that's what she sounds like. But she ain't, she ain't on that, that far rightness. She ain't no Trump or none of that stuff. She's just a woman who's fed up. And there's a lot of people in California who are fed up. Most of them have left. 
I mean, you talking about, and she's wealthy enough to move. She can go anywhere she wants to go, just like Pat, just like Vinny, just like Tom. Uh, they can go anywhere. Anywhere. But she wants to stay because that's her home. But what she was talking about with decriminalizing prostitution, what did they do? They made it to where basically cops can't arrest women for, the, for that trade. Now, if they do a sting or whatever, they're going to get caught, but they'll let them go. They'll bring them in, run their run their prints, pictures, and then they'll turn them loose. You know what I mean? Same thing with the drug use out there. It's, man, drug use is a problem. And it ain't crack. She's talking about crack, man. They are, it's fentanyl, right? It's, it's Heron. It's out there. Like, I've seen that myself. You go down certain alleys, downtown L.A. especially, you see people sitting right there, man, patting they, you know, patting they, uh, they arm, bro, getting them veins to pop out. And you see it there everywhere, bro. They and walking around like zombies. You go down a, a skid row. Oh my God, bro. Hey, I mean, that looks like a that looks like a movie set, man. You go on skid row, you're looking around for the cameras. Like, is this they shooting a movie? It, it there's real life zombies down there. A whole nother life. So you got this thing, instead of legalizing prostitution, which she's right, they should do. Legalize it, tax it, regulate it, you know what I mean, and protect everybody involved. When she said they got Johns out there, Shane Lyman, there's dudes out there getting their pimp hand down. Women too. They're out there. It's pimping is a thing. Pimping ain't never went nowhere in L.A. But now it's really a thing. They out there on the, sh man, they got these women on the track. They got them on the track for real. And the stuff that they're wearing, all you got to do is type in L.A. Streetwalkers on YouTube. There are guys out there. That's all they do is drive around and film it. Broad daylight all over the place, man. Now, when I got there in the late 90s, they had areas where you could go like on Vermont, or uh, uh, not Wilshire, but um, Western, Vermont, Pico. There were certain places where, you know, you could go and you might find some, some women late night trying or whatever, but they weren't wearing what they're wearing now. Like, these women walking around now with straight up lingerie on, man, like G-strings, everything hanging out. I mean, I've seen more clothes on a stripper. And they're walking up and down the street. Crossing the streets, police right there, walking up the cars, you know, talking to them, whatever, getting the car. It's crazy. Back in the 90s, they had on regular clothes. You didn't know. You didn't know if she was on her way to a club or what. Right? You would just see them like, okay. And you talk to people like, oh, no, nah, man, she on the track. She working. Like, where? You would see them inside of um nice uh, bars and lounges. You know, just kind of talk to them. Hey, what's going on? And you find out, like, oh, no, they'll tell you, like, no, 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 that's a call girl. Like, where? But now they look like a caricature from a movie from the 70s or 80s. They're walking around like that. Like, bro, what are they doing? And the police aren't doing anything about it. And yes, people are going to get hurt. If you regulate it, if it's legal, there's a red light district, there's protection for both sides. You pay your taxes. You're, you're safe. You don't have to worry about people trying to pimp you with this and that. You could just, just, just like they do in Amsterdam, just like they do in Aruba, just like they do in you name the country, right? But no, they're not going to do that. She's right. They're just lazy. We're going to decriminalize. We're going to make it almost impossible for law enforcement to do anything about it. And we're going to turn you loose. And like you said, these kids will be walking to school two o'clock in the afternoon trying to come home. And there's, you know, cut down an alleyway. Alleys are everywhere in L.A., right? In the valley, down to L.A., everywhere. You cut down the alley, you trying to come home. And there's a dude standing up against the wall with a prostitute on her knees. You seeing it right there in real life. This ain't something you seeing on, on, your, on your phone, on your computer. Like, they don't care, bro. You know, you got your kids roam, roaming around and seeing this stuff and these people saying stuff to your kids like, hey, come over here, little boy. Come over here, little girl. Nah, man. They have lost control of their streets in certain areas out there. So I think that people like Anna are going to help them get that back. It's, it's scary. I used to walk my daughter to school and pick her up from school every day. You know, just like I do now, I drive her now. But back then, we used to walk to school. Was, school was right down the street, two blocks. And I'd be walking two blocks looking around because back then it was homeless. They were everywhere. It was homelessness. And most of the people who were homeless, they had some sort of addiction that they were fighting or and or they were mentally unstable. So you had to be there and be ready. Be ready. You might have somebody who's homeless and just mentally unstable. They see some little kid and they just want to say hi and touch him. It's like, nah, bro, back up. Fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll do something to you. And, and it's still in their mind. They're just, no, I just want to say hi to the pretty little girl. I want to say hi to the pretty little boy. Like, man, you better back up before I do something to you, bro. And it's gotten way worse. Let's continue. As long as we find the right balance to keep everyone safe, keep everyone as happy as they can be, 
So we can see these cities thrive, but these cities are not thriving. Okay. San Francisco is terrifying. And I, it's hilarious to me because the business community there wants to put lipstick on a pig. They want to put out this $4 million ad campaign pretending as though everything in San Francisco is all hunky-dory. It's not hunky-dory. San Francisco is a nightmare. Yes, violent crime went down a little bit, but <laughs> your car's going to get broken into. Okay, you're going to get robbed. Th those are up, by the way. Both yeah, of those, those two are categories are and correct. The, and the smash and grabs. And you love yeah, the smash and grabs in LA because they decriminalized yep. under $1,000. So. Keep going. I mean, it's just not, it's not right. There are certain issues that we've had for a long time. The drug war was a failure. And so going back to the drug war, I don't think is going to be effective. But you know what else isn't effective? Hmm. Using taxpayer money, funneling it to nonprofits so they can literally buy crack pipes and hand them out at Skid Row. And there bleach there is video evidence of that. How does that make so anyone sense? on the left yeah. who wants to come at me and pretend like this is just a right wing scaremongering talking point, you're full of crap. And you should go online and you should watch the videos of literal. We spent $13 billion in Los Angeles alone last year to combat homelessness. You want to know where that money went? That money went to these trash nonprofits who have a bunch of executives making half a million dollars a year. You're working for a nonprofit dealing with homelessness. That's my money. That's my parents' money. Okay. That is the hardworking people of California paying incredibly high taxes that go to what? So yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And, and she's not lying about that, guys. She's not lying about that. You know, Brother Dino will be on here, like Dino Dinosaur, and you know, they'll talk about, you know, the Dems put this money for this and that money for that. I mean, that's cool and that's great for the headline. And they did. They earmarked the money. But where's the money ultimately end up? Like she said, you got these nonprofits with people sitting on the board getting, you know, 250000 up to $500,000 a year to sit on this board and say where the rest of this money goes. Like that right there doesn't work. Like that's a lot of money. You, you're looking at all this money that you're paying these people to sit on the board. They should, they, that should be pro bono. They should sit on those boards for free. Every dime of that money, that, that 13 billion that she was talking about, every dime should go to getting help for the homeless, getting help for people with mental issues, mental challenges, getting help with people who have substance abuse, abuse problems, getting help to those women you know, on the streets, hustling like that, unless you're going to legalize it, right? Maybe creating some jobs so people have some options so they don't have to do that. You, you feel me? Like, it's, that's how that money should work. But if you're going to pay somebody, you know, 250 all the way up to $500,000 a year to sit on the board and tell you how you should spend money to help the homelessness, they're never going to really want to help the homelessness, are they? Because as soon as you solve the problem, you're out of a job. That's a million dollars every other year. You're out of a job. You're out of power, too, because now you ain't controlling the money that's coming in there. That's power to that. Right. And again, I'm I'm not some far right dude. She's not some far right woman. She's telling the truth. She's sitting at a, she's sitting on the TV, a podcast full of dudes who on the right. Right. Some far right. Vinny comes off far right these days. I've known Vinny a long time. I've never we never discussed politics. We're comedians. But I look at it. I'm looking at his politics and what he's saying. Vinny's far right. Right. You got Pat. I would say he's moderate. He's moderate. Right. Or maybe just right, like just radically conservative. And then Tom, you know, he's a financial guy, but he doesn't seem, you know, too far right. And then you got Adam Sosnick, who's supposed to be like the, the liberal guy on the panel on the panel. So what she's saying makes sense to me. It's common sense kind of stuff, bro. You know, and you like it's a head scratcher because just like all that money is being wasted and people are just like she said, that's her money. That's that's her grand, her parents and grandparents money. That's the money of the people from California. All that tax money. This is why they want to don't want to be there anymore. Like you don't make me pay all this money. Then you just going to give it to somebody like that. It's not even going to help the people who need the help the most. And, and if you if you put a dent in the homelessness issues out there in California, you know, once you get that under control, then maybe you can really start focusing on this crime and again. Just let the police do their job. 